Now, today marks 40 years since the sinking of the Belgrano by the British Royal Navy during the Falklands War. 323 Argentines died, just under half of Argentina's total military deaths in the conflict. And it remains, for some, one of the most controversial events of the war. Certainly still sparks debate to this day. Uh, joining us now, the historian and journalist Guy Walters. Guy, great to have you on the programme this morning. Um, and I, and I wonder, <laughs> I remember, uh, perhaps not the event itself, the sinking of the Belgrano, but all of the coverage, all of the debate that happened in the years subsequent. M many people younger than you and I have not. So first, I think, just a quick reminder of what actually happened with the Belgrano. Well, what happened was that the uh, Belgrano, a massive uh, Argentine warship, was in the South Atlantic. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a big boat. It represented a huge threat to the British Navy and the British forces that are on their way down there to, to retake the Falkland Islands. And at the time, there had been this, uh, what was known as a 200-mile exclusion zone around the Falklands. Uh, it, it, and the, you know, the Belgrano was outside the exclusion zone. And when she was torpedoed by the British submarine HMS Conqueror, uh, people against the action said, aha, Belgrano is outside the exclusion zone. This was the British not playing ball. This was a war crime. In fact, that controversy, and that rages on to today, should be absolutely nailed this morning on this programme. Because on April the 23rd, the British informed the Argentinians through the United Nations, through the Swiss, that any boat anywhere in the South Atlantic, any aeroplane, would be blown out the water or the sky. It was going to be like a shooting gallery at a fairground. Yeah, and the, the captain of the Belgrano, a man called Hector Bonzo, said that the sinking of his ship was not a war crime. No one in Argentina in the, in the Navy thinks it's a war crime. No one grown up in Syria's here thinks it's a war crime. It, you know, it was fair game and it was very, very sad that so many people died. Look, I, I understand that notions of uh, legality, illegality, particularly when you're talking about international, when you're talking about responsibilities under Geneva Convention uh, and so on, can often get a little bit, can often get a little bit messy. But in part, are some people critical of this decision because of the fairly, fairly British kind of feeling that you know the ship was pointing away, we shot no. it when it was heading out of the zone. No. Go on. It, sorry, the zone has got nothing to do with it, and this has been mm. the red herring for forty years, and this is mm. how. The debate has been framed by those who are against it. On April the 23rd, we literally said, I, I could quote, I've got it in front of me, uh, that we will target any you know, submarine, auxiliary or military aircraft, any shipping, anywhere in the South Atlantic. The exclusion zone had nothing to do with it. And the reason why we issued that communique on April the 23rd, and it's absolutely crucial people remember this, it was to say this is in addition to the exclusion zone. The exclusion zone was there to tell neutral shipping that this was going to be a war zone, an unsafe mm -hmm. place. It's a red herring, April the 23rd, that communique, ask people to Google it and they'll see it right there in black and white. The Argentinians knew it, the captain of the Belgrano knew it, which way he was pointing, irrelevant. I, I suspect, though, as well, part of the reason why this, in inverted commas, it, it debate is, it has been ongoing and has been, in inverted commas, raging for so long, is that, the Arge is that Argentina, Argentina still has ambitions as regards to the Falklands. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I'm just glad that we're finally able to nail this bait today. And I hope you never get me on in 10 years, because by then both of us will look too old. But I, I think that it's, there are people in Argentina who, who clearly do want to recapture what they call Las Malvinas, um, uh, they're happy to paint the British um, as, you know, in any, you know, negative light as possible. Um, so the Belgrano fits into that narrative very easily uh, for them. But of course, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it, it was a legal action um, and uh, no, no one has ever tried prosecuting the British uh, thinking of Belgrano as a war crime. The captain of the Conqueror, you know, he, he can go to his bed, I hope, as easily as possible for doing his duty, but I think today's the day in which we remember, as you said, 323 people die. Well, on that point, what of the way in which the British media kind of responded to the sinking of the Belgrano at the time? You will know exactly where I am going with this, and it's straight to the front page of The Sun, and that headline gotcha. Yeah, that was a celebration. I mean, for those um, whose memories aren't quite so long, The, the Sun <laughs> famously had a headline saying, gotcha, we have sunk British warship, and it was an uh, Argentinian warship. And that was considered a uh, obviously a very sort of somewhat tasteless headline. Again, there's a bit of myth to that story as well, because actually that headline only made the Northern Editions. 
there was also some inaccuracy about it. Uh, I can't remember specifically what. And it was very quickly pulled when it was realised that the magnitude of the loss of life. So again, you know, the idea that every copy of the Sun in the UK, you know, the next day had got you on it and a picture of the Belgrano, you know, there was just a kind of stock image of an Argentine ship. It said gotcha, it wasn't too sure which ship, and it only made the northern editions. Apologies to those in the north. Um, and it was pulled very quickly. Um, Guy, just a, a final word. All of this feels very familiar, doesn't it? Given, uh, you're, you're forgiven a, a touch of deja vu with the, the sinking of the Moskva not that long ago. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, in fact, it was the sinking of Moscow which um, uh, uh, prompted me to write about uh, the Belgrano. Mm. Uh, and because it, it was a sort of a, you know, it's a big ship is sunk. You know, no one wants to sort of admit to that failure. No one, you know, the Russians say about the Moscow, you know, it's, uh, you know, it was, it just seemed to have sink because of a fire, you know, fake news. And the idea that the Belgrano sunk was a war crime, that's 40 year old fake news that we absolutely need to nail today. Guy, fascinating to talk to you, and I'll share that article a little later on. Uh, Guy Waters, many thanks for joining us.